Chapter 15 of Just Stories, The Kind That Never Grow Old by Winfred Hurst, S.T.S. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Maria Therese. God's Ways How wonderful they are, God's ways. I must tell the truest story ever, merely hiding the real names away and telling it so that you'll never find out where the two favored ones live. It's a tale never told before. Rose had been praying for months and months for the conversion of a friend to Holy Church. Rose, you must know, was an invalid and was confined to her room in bed. She was a fading flower. That, I suppose, is why she saw little of Jeanette, the young lady who was the object of her prayer. And yet she prayed, devoutly, humbly, perseveringly, confidently, as we should always pray, never doubting that in his own good time, and in his own marvelous way, God would answer her prayers. But she was reverently, lovingly familiar with God, as he really wants us to be, and she dared to ask just this. Dear God, she pleaded, bring her to thee, and after her baptism in Holy Communion, have her call on me first of all to tell me the good news. Yes, that was sweetly bold, that was asking much, but such requests delight the God who so delights to give. Meanwhile, in some mysterious way, Jeanette was being attracted to the Catholic Church. Little she knew that the prayers of a fading rose were climbing heaven's heights and bringing the grace and the blessings down. One thing led to another until she took that first decisive step, the step that scatters the darkness of prejudice and the clouds of doubt more than aught else. She went to see Father Corvin. The kindly influence of the priest, you see, is half the battle won. Then one happy experience followed the other in rapid succession. There were instructions, and finally baptism, and thus the day of First Holy Communion drew near for Jeanette. Everything had been arranged. She was to receive the Savior in the sacrament of his love, for the first time on a Sunday morning. But as she was about to leave the house, she passed a sideboard, and not thinking of the Eucharistic fast, still strange to her, she thoughtlessly took a cup of water. Think of the dull disappointment when she realized what she had done. When she reached the church, she hastened to Father Corvin. What was she to do? Just come tomorrow morning, said the priest soothingly, understandingly. And in the meantime, a fading rose was breathing trustingly. Dear God, bring her to thee, and after her baptism and holy communion, have her call on me first of all, and tell me the good news. The next morning there was a gentle rap at the invalid's door. Rose! There stood Jeanette, glowing with a joy never felt before. Rose, she cried, I have such good news. I'm on my way home from church where I just received my first Holy Communion. It just occurred to me in passing to drop in and tell you first of all. Why, Rose? For the fading Rose had dropped back upon her pillow with a look of heaven in her eyes, and breathing words that were a thrill with the music of the angels that know best the unspeakable goodness of God. Dear God, I thank thee. Do you know why, dearest? Oh, never, never doubt the goodness of Jesus. Ask, and you shall receive. End of chapter 15